This was going to be the part of the show where I admit that I screwed up, but screwed up is a harsh way to put it. I didn't really mess anything up, but I did get a little ahead of myself with that preview at the end of the last video because, of course, what we want to do right now is take a look at the default information originate command and compare it to what we saw in the stub routing video two videos back. We did a stub area and a total stub area. Took a little detour because I wanted to explain the ABR and ASBR to you. But now we're back to this configuration almost because this is the network that we used for stub routing and total stub routing. And we had a routing table on router 4 that looked a little something like this. I think we even have an extra route in there right now. The uh, loopback 11 that we made on router 1. But you can see we got a huge routing table. We also saw exactly how to use a stub area and then a total stub area to really bring this table down. Now, the reason I'm showing you this, and I want you to compare it to what we're about to see, is that the next command, default information originates, sounds fantastic, and I'm not saying you'll never use it in a production network. I've seen it plenty of times, uh, but it's a little rare, and you're gonna see why, because when I tell you what, a default in, what the default information originate command does, you're like, great, and what it does, it allows an OSPF speaking router to advertise a default route without going into the stub routing configuration. You're not, you're not creating a stub area when you are working with default information originate. And you're like, hey, you know, that's fantastic. Because sometimes, as we saw two videos back, you can't always make a stub area when you want to. And of course, nailing your CCNA and becoming a world-class network admin, it's all about noticing details. And what detail do you notice really changing from this diagram to this one? Besides its position, I know it slid over a little bit. That doesn't count. What are we missing here? We're missing area 34 because here all of our routers are in area zero primarily. You know, we have our loopbacks in the separate areas, but there's no area 34 connecting routers three and four. So if I'm looking at this huge table, which I am right now, I rebuilt the network during the break because you know how to build this. Where on router four, I'm looking at a huge table and I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, I can do some kind of stub routing. Well, thing is, you can't because we're in area zero. What happens when you try to do that? That's a quick reminder here. Eh, forget it. Forget it. Backbone can't be configured as a stub area. It can't be the transit area and it can't be a stub area either. So, now what do we do? Well, default information originates sounds like a pretty good idea because, again, it allows a router to advertise a default route. And what you want to do here really is have, have router 3 advertise a default route over to router 4. That's what it sounds like we want, right? Because that's what we had when we configured the stub and then especially the total stub. The table was shrunk down by 95%. We had that nice default route. So let's see exactly what happens with this particular particular command it does have a little pain in the butt hyphen there but you got a nice description there distribute a default route we've got some options here about always advertising it a default metric a metric type and a route map reference then I don't think we need any of those so let's go ahead with default information originate no reloading no redoing adjacencies no nothing necessary here so we go over to router four. Let's run a show uh, route OSPF because that default route will still be an OSPF command and, or excuse me, an OSPF route. And I don't see one. That's because there isn't one. The table looks exactly the same. Well, I told router three to advertise the default route. But the thing is, with the command as I entered it, let's just go right back up to it. Default information originate. This command allows a router to advertise a default route in OSPF if there is one to advertise in the local table. Ah, and with, with everything being the same, router 3 is not going to have a default route all by itself. And we can run show IP route OSPF just to verify that. It's got all kinds of routes, but it does not have a default route to advertise. But unbelievably, there's actually a workaround for this, and it's the always option that we saw before. Because if you use default information originate always, that allows a router to advertise a default route, even if it doesn't have one in its own routing table to advertise. Now, that sounds like a fantastic feature. Let's go ahead and go under OSPF 
And then for housekeeping's sake, I'm going to take off the original command. And then just tack always onto the end of this one. And again, always advertise default route. And that means always, even if there isn't one to advertise. Don't need any of those options. We're good. And let's go down to router four. And don't see it yet. Let's give it a moment there. Ah, and there it is, right at the top. On top of the same big whopping table that we already had. So this is why I wanted to bring this command to your attention shortly after doing the stub and total stub areas. So people get a little confused on this and they see stub and total stub areas and they think, oh, okay, when I generate a default route, that means that all the more specific routes go away. Not automatically with every command. Stub routing and total stub routing is doing that on purpose and we saw which routes went out with a stub and then which ones went out with a total stub. But with default information originate, you are strictly creating, excuse me, default information originate always, you're strictly advertising a default route and that's it. It's not like all of these other more specific routes in the table are going to go away. You would have to filter them somehow and, and doing that with OSPF can be a pain and maybe it's something you just don't want to do. So what I would do in real world networking here, frankly, is if I had this particular configuration, I would say, hey, let's make an area between routers three and four. <laughs> let's make area 34 and then we can make that a stub. I really, default information originate has its uses in real world networking, but you see the drawback. Please remember, with the always option, you are only advertising a default route. You're not getting rid of any other routes in the table. Plus, and there's, but wait, there's more. This is a, an omnidirectional command, if you will, because what we're going to see as a result of default information originate there is not only does router 4 have a default route in its table, so does router 1, because router 1 and router 3 have an adjacency. So if we go up to router 1 and run show IP route OSPF, there's a default route. As a matter of fact, it's being load balanced because of the two connections that routers 1 and 2 have. We're going to look at load balancing uh, in more detail here shortly, but that's why you see two entries right there because the metrics are exactly the same. So then you go over to router 2, and it's got a default route. Maybe you didn't want it over there. And if we were running our largest network where router 5 was in the mix right here, it would have a default route as well. So router 3 in this case is just sending that default route everywhere. That's something else to watch out for. The, I, I'm, I don't mean to, to just bash the command, okay? It can be useful. But the reason I'm showing it to you in this particular network is first, we saw it on R4. But that doesn't mean other more specific routes are going away. Also, it's advertised to routers 1 and 2, and we weren't even talking about sending a default route up there. We were perfectly happy with the way things were. So again, all things being equal, I'd rather use a stub area or a total stub area. But in case an exam question, job interview, or job situation, production network situation, just means that you can't make a non-backbone area there. You could use default information originate always, but you'd have to do some pretty serious route filtering along the way as well. And that's a more advanced OSPF skill that unfortunately we can't get into because we're learning enough skills as it is. So there's default information originate. You know the theory. It sounds great. But when you put it in an operation and production networks, you just got to watch your step and make sure you're getting the result that you want to get. Now coming up next, I've got it. Uh, we're going to see some load balancing in the next couple of videos. We're also going to talk about cost when you want to tweak it and a couple of different scenarios because there are a couple of different commands that you can use in OSPF to tweak a route cost. And we will see them all in action coming up next.